Here's the last video you will watch on fixing the Onan 5500. Runs for a while and then sputters out. You've put more oil in, take more oil out. Too hot, too cold, this, that, fix everything else. <clears throat> Fuel pump. While you're at it, replace the line. The fuel filter up there. Put a 24 millimeter socket on it. Screws right out. I'm gonna put some RTV on it. Replace the fuel line, wrap it in some heat shrink. And there's the old fuel filter pump. Take those two bolts out. It'll pull down. We're gonna replace the line. One fun task is getting these crimp clamps off. And boy, if that ain't like a monkey in a football. So you just unwind the band. It'll come off. 7 16th socket. Take this fitting off here. Now, if you're a stuff haver, you already got one of these. Clamp the line down. And of course, in my stuff having toolbox, I have one of these to get this. There we go. Pop that puppy right off. All right. Don't let it match. Make sure when you disconnect the positive negative or these two wires you mark them significantly appropriately so that you know to put them back on the right way that is very important you don't want to mess that up plus one's male one's female so there's that there's too. the old fuel pump and that filter looks kind of shiny for the love of god don't put old parts back on to tighten it it's a 916 socket I'll have to set the phone down here. Um, about three oogadugas should do it, or however tight you can hold on to the pump without it tearing your middle finger off. I'm going to wrap this in this heat shrink tape. I suspect some of you will be able to wrap it a little tighter than I'm going to be able to, but I'm not a professional. Maybe I am. I put a little RTV on that fitting. I think it's a 7 16 socket I'll use. Reconnecting these wires, you know, they always give you an extra one to two millimeters to work with. I put a needle nose back there to kind of hold the wire as I push it in. And you want to make sure you disconnect the battery when you're dealing with electricity and gasoline. At least that's what they tell me. I want to clean the line out just because I don't want any bits of dust in there. So I'm going to hit the prime. We'll see what's going to happen here. Okay, well, I got nothing now. I hold it. I hear a solenoid engage. But I got nothing. Hmm. Interesting. It has nothing simple. I had to drag all the tools out again. <sighs> that extra millimeter of wire... I didn't have it plugged in all the way. Now listen to her bark. Oops. Whoop. Son of a bitch. So it's been running for an hour now. Again, I replaced that fuel filter, the fuel line, wrapped it in heat sink underneath. I replaced the fuel filter and the fuel pump and it has been running like a champ. Purchased this Class A last year. We've had a problem with the generator not staying running. We've dropped the generator, cleaned it out, we put a new starter in, which may have been a different issue anyway. We've tested the oil pressure switch. I filled the oil level all the way to full. I tried it halfway. I even tried the oil level down at the ad mark because there's videos you've watched that said, oh, you've got too much oil. None of those worked. This morning I got serious about testing the generator and I started it, timed how long it ran, tracking various factors. Nothing was consistent and repeatable. Except for one thing, a friend of mine suggested the fuel pump. So the next time that the generator died, I drained the carburetor bowl, no gas came out. 
I pressed and held down the prime button and I did not hear that noise. After I waited five, ten minutes, whether it would cool down enough or what, I'd come out and sure enough, the primer would work. It would start and take off. So if you've been through a million videos on why your own generator dies, try that. Press the prime, prime button right away after it dies. See if your fuel pump is kicking in.